and to have the great honor of introducing my pal, James Rosenquist. I'm delighted and yet surprised by being honored by the Hermitage Museum. Uh, I want to thank Paul Rodzienko and his lovely wife for his hospitality <clears throat> and also uh, meeting again uh, Mark Kellner, which is integral to what I'm going to tell you. And by chance, a young Russian artist named Yevgeny Rukin saw a catalog of mine from the Museum of Modern Art in 1964. He wrote me and I wrote him back. My curiosity with Russia long, began long before that. One of my favorite fellow workers painting billboards was David Mishnik. He'd been in the army in Russia under the czars and he said he saw Siberian tigers. He was a dear friend. In 1965, I visited Eugene in Leningrad. Went to the Hermitage Museum. He was an artist and not political at all. He showed me around Leningrad, which was very beautiful. The pastel buildings were amazing, no cars. I went to the opera, saw the marriage of Figaro. The only thing they said in Russian was, rubles! I, I visited the Hermitage, saw beautiful paintings I didn't know existed. And compared to Western art, that I was quite familiar with from the ages, there were like like Russian artists. I mean, there were Russian artists like other Western uh, other artists, um, and they were really. It was really surprising. Uh, <clears throat> Leningrad was probably quite a different place than today. I mean, it was. There were no cars. Food was available. Very few consumer goods. Later, I worked with Tatiana Grossman, the publisher of Universal Limited Art Editions, who was born in Siberia, and we would dance to music Eugen sent me in her print shop. I continued sending Eugen masking tape and a staple gun, and then in 1976, I was about to send him six pair of jeans. He, we think he got killed by the KGB. His widow asked me, <clears throat> his, his, his widow, Galina Popova, Send me a magazine and a little piece of paper in it, and it says, I'm Eugene's widow. I'm able to leave Soviet Union as political refugee. Would you store his paintings? I put another little piece of paper in a magazine. I sent it back to her, and I wrote, da. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> on my sidewalk in Chamber Street came these two big burnt crates of Eugene's paintings. So I stored them for nine years, <coughs> and then my helpers, two old boys, 69 and 81, they drove her paintings out to West Texas where she moved, because I think she was afraid of the KGB in Manhattan. Now, a new friend of mine, Vitaly Komar, introduced me to a young man, Mark Kellner, and uh, I, I, I met um, um, you, uh, Vitali at his exhibition at the Ronald Feldman Gallery, and he introduced me to this young guy, young guy who's here tonight, handsome guy with all the hair, and <laughs> and uh, I said, it's, you know, I said uh, I used to have a pen pal in Russia named Eugene Rukin. This guy went bananas. He went, yeah, oh, Eugene Rukin. We are making foundation for him. We are discovering. He discovered letters of mine. I wrote to Eugene, and uh, that's why I'm here tonight. You don't think you're going to get off that easy, do you? What do I dance? No, so is it appropriate if we give you, it's not in your style, but we would like to give you a recognition that I hope you will enjoy and appreciate. Wow. It's Hermitage. <laughs> And you know what it's, uh, you ought to, maybe you ought to read what it says. Wow. No, this Ladies and gentlemen, get a load of that. <laughs> the Hermitage Museum Foundation recognizes and celebrates the outstanding lifelong artistic achievements of James Rosenquist on this evening in his honor. 
and signed by Mikhail Borisovich Piotrovsky and your her humble servant, Paul. <laughs> November 6th in the city of New York because you the man.